Hello, my friends. May God bless you all. A very good morning. May the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that guides His children into all truth, and He doesn't leave them lost in this world. No. The Holy Spirit is the guide who guides us into all truth. And the Word of God is the truth that sets us free, that guides us, that conducts us. Of course, in order for you to have access to the voice of the Holy Spirit, it's very nice. In order for you to have access to the voice of the Holy Spirit, you have to be born of Him. Jesus said, whoever is not born of the water, the water baptism, death to the world, die for the world, and is not born of the Holy Spirit, cannot enter the kingdom of, of God. So, whoever is born of the water and of the Holy Spirit is a spirit. Is a spirit. How so, Bishop? Is he spirit? What do you mean? No, look here, I'm flesh, look. I, I have my desires, I desire this and that. I have my needs, my physical needs, so how can I be spirit? Well, pay close attention. When a person is born of the Holy Spirit, they are spirit. They leave the physical, materialistic world and enter the spiritual world, God's world. They become spirit and they have the ability to hear, to be sensitive to the voice of God, the voice of the Holy Spirit. Of course, still, they still have to make decisions whether you follow and obey Him or not. However, the Holy Spirit will speak. This is glorious. This is magnificent. Of course, there is something else as well. Whoever lives in the spiritual world thinks they don't live by what they see or feel or touch by the taste buds. No, those who live in the spiritual world, they reason, they rationalize, they use their ability, their intellectual ability. It's not that the person has to know how to read and write to be intellectual. No, to be intellectual is everyone who, who thinks. Everyone who, who thinks are, are spiritual. Those who don't think are emotional. So, when a person is born of the Holy Spirit, they become spirit, which means they have God's nature in them. Their essence is spiritual. And when the person is spiritual, they understand the Word of God. And the Holy Spirit speaks. And they listen. And they obey. For example, let's be more practical about this. You who are there experiencing a living hell, problems everywhere, in your marriage, in your relationships, problems with your children, with your parents, financial problems, debts, unemployment, situations that are terrible. You, you've been like rubbish in this world. No one cares about you at all because you've, you have nothing. People in this materialistic world only value those who have money. Even if those who have money are actually rottening, rottening in the darkness of this world, still they are more valued than those who have nothing for them. They live in a dumpster. They live on the streets. They are prisoners. They are people, let's say, 
abandoned, That's left it. aside by society. Então, presta so, atenção. pay attention. Presta atenção. Pay close attention. Que o Espírito Santo What the Holy Spirit says to those who are spirit and to those who want to be spiritual. Those who want to be. Because in order to be spiritual, you don't have to be religious. You have to be a person of faith. And to be of faith is to believe, is to obey, to practice, to follow molding your life according to the word of the Holy Spirit, the word of God, because God is a spirit, and his children are spirit or spiritual, and those who want to be spiritual, they follow, obeying, they continue obeying the word of God, and God reveals himself to them. Look, so you who are experiencing a serious problem in your life right now. You, you say that you are spiritual, that you were born of the Spirit, but when the problems come, we tend to complain, to lament, to cry and look for a show that you cry on and to say, oh, so and so I'm suffering like this. As if, as if, as if the person who is listening would resolve, they would be able to resolve their problem. Sometimes they even cause more problems. Because you lament your life to others and there's always an advice. The devil uses a person to lead you to make the wrong decision and take the wrong path. But when you hear the word of God from a person who is spiritual, a spiritual person will tell you like this, in everything give thanks. This is very strong. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Which means that whoever is in Christ Jesus, whoever was born of the water and of the Holy Spirit, whoever was born of the Holy Spirit is a spirit, is a spiritual, and is naturally, naturally in Christ Jesus. And whoever is in Christ Jesus has by default, by default, they have the spiritual obligation to give thanks to God in everything. Bishop, explain this better to me. How am I going to give thanks to God if I am in pain? When we are in pain, we are, oh wow, it's painful. Yes or no? That's it. I know how it is. Do you think we don't feel pain as well? When we are going through moments of storms, thank God. But how am I going to give thanks to God if these storms are trying to sink my life? But that's what it is. In everything, give thanks. It's what is written here. This is the word that the Holy Spirit gave to Paul that he should write and send to the church in Thessalonians. The church, not the unbelievers. Unbelievers don't understand this. But if the unbelievers, if the unbelievers want to taste the power of such word, of this prayer, because when you give thanks to God, you are praying. You are communicating with God. And that's where the greatness of in everything give thanks lies. Because you, for example, you are going through that storm, in that tribulation, that it's terrible. And amidst the storm and tribulation, you say, thank God. So, yes, in that moment, you connect to God. You leave that hostile environment and you enter God's presence. And God then, seeing that you are obedient to his word, he then comes 
and delivers you from that storm. He delivers you. He gives the solution to the problem. Not in the moment that you want. It's not you that decides when. You don't give the rules. You don't dictate the rules. He is the one who decides the best moment to resolve the problem because there is a time. There's a time to, to be born and a time to die. You know that. There's a time to plant and a time to reap. And we have to know the right time to do the right thing. God had already chosen Jonas there before he was even born to go to Nineveh and, and bring the word of God. But Jonah said, no, I don't want it. I don't want to follow this. And he ran away. He got into a boat and ran away. But it didn't work because God had called him. And they found out that Jonah was responsible for that storm that was going to sink the boat and everybody was going to die. So they cast Jonah into the sea, and a fish, a big fish, came and swallowed Jonah. And, and God allowed all that to happen. God allowed all those things that happened to him so that we could understand that God is God. He's sovereign. He's the Almighty. He is omniscient. He knows all things. Even what you are going to think, even what you are going to think in a thousand years from now, let's put it this way. He knows. He knows all things. All things. And He is omnipresent. He is everywhere. There is no way to run from Him. And that's why when the person is in their little world, afflicted and in despair, and they give thanks to God, then God is there and He's seeing all things. He's seeing the effort, the supernatural effort the person is making to get out of that situation. And when the person says, thank God, sometimes, pay attention here, I have been praying, I've been praying, for certain people for years. And this is a personal testimony. Years and years and years. And God hasn't answered me. I mean, He answered, but I haven't seen the answer yet. When I look like this, I say, e my gosh, have mercy, have compassion, please. But then I remember this word, oh, give thanks in everything. So instead of lamenting and complaining and crying, the Holy Spirit reminds me, give thanks, praise God. Give thanks in everything, praise Him. So sometimes you are inside, sometimes we are, we, my apologies to say like this, but sometimes we find ourselves inside of a whale, but God is the one who allowed us to get to that point, because he wants to teach us who he is, how he is, and what he does, his greatness. He wants us to have experiences. He does not want us to be immature or that we keep running after the wind of this world. He doesn't want us to be playing, looking at the devil's rattle. Oh yeah, how cute. No, God doesn't want us to be observing the rattles of the internet where you waste time where you waste time, he wants us to think, think his thoughts. Give thanks in everything, my friend. We only learn by suffering. I am like this. I've suffered a lot, but I didn't learn everything yet. No, I'm just starting. 
I've been through a lot, many difficult situations, and God allowed. And in those moments of difficulty, I didn't give thanks to God. I didn't. Not at all. I cried, I groaned, I groaned, I screamed, I cried out. And in the right moment, he stretched out his hand and delivered me. Oh, my Father, may you be sanctified in our lives. You, dear friend, if you were born of God, of the Holy Spirit, if you have the Holy Spirit, because whoever doesn't have the Spirit of God is not his, but if you were born of the Holy Spirit, then learn to give thanks to God, because this is a powerful prayer for the moments of tribulation. The greatest prayer, the most powerful prayer you can say in moments of tribulation is this one. Do this. Try it out. And wait. You are going to see what the Holy Spirit will do. Oh, hallelujah. It's going to break through. It's going to break through. Dear friend, God is with us. God is with you. He's with me. He's with us. He is with all those who cry out to Him in spirit and in truth. All those who obey. All those who are inclined towards hearing His voice. He is with you. And therefore, give thanks to Him right now as you are experiencing this problem. You are in the dumpster of life. Give thanks to Him, okay? Tomorrow, we are going to be speaking more about this. And on Sunday, This Sunday, which is Mother's Day in Brazil, we are going to be praying for the mother. The church is the mother. And the father, I don't even have to say who the father is. God is our father. The father, son, and Holy Spirit. The church is the mother. God and the mother. God and the mother, God in heaven, the mother on earth, which is the church of the Lord Jesus, which is the body of our Lord Jesus. He is the head. God is the head. Jesus is the head of the church. And whoever is born of God is part of this body. Therefore, let's give Praise to God, always, always, because He is with us. There's no death or life or hell, nothing in this world, nothing, no wars, nothing, nothing, nothing can separate us from this love, from this unity, from this togetherness, which is the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose head is our Lord Jesus Christ. Tomorrow, we are going to be back. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.